Winston and Felix are here. And Winston just said to me, Felix, I think there are three stocks that could really, really blow up this year. Do you know what they are? And I said, I think I think I probably do. I think we've talked about this before. Shall we share it with people? With people? I think we should. So I'm going to walk you here through Winston's research, which is the fundamentals, how they're doing, the actual trades we're doing on these stocks, and much, much more. The whole point being to make you the best informed investor out there. And I'll do one better for you. And I put down below a full write-up of how you can actually build wealth with trading. If you go to felixschwanz.org slash wealth, felixschwanz.org slash wealth, you can download that document. I'll pop it on the screen here as well. You can see it free of charge, of course, as usual. So let's get cracking then. Before we do, one thing I want to encourage you to do is come and learn how you can make your money work harder for you so you don't have to work so bloody hard yourself. We made in 2022 126% return on capital employed. Last year, we made 105% on capital employed. And this year, we're up about $5,000, give or take, on an approximately 30K portfolio that I run as a sort of exemplary portfolio to show people like what we do. Look at the win rate we have on trades. If you want to learn that completely for free, exactly how I do what I do, come and join me on Tuesday evening live at felixfrenzerock slash webinar. I'll break this down for you. You don't need to know anything. It's completely beginner friendly. I assume zero knowledge. So come and hop over there, felixfrenzerock slash webinar, and I'll teach you. And it'll be fun. It'll take about 90 minutes or so. So stock number one out of the three is, uh, as Winston had to lie down, SoFi. And we've talked about SoFi before on this channel, but let me just run you through a few things and I'll show you the actual trade I'm doing and why I feel bullish on this stock. So SoFi is growing very nicely. Cash flow is so-so, but it's a bank. I wouldn't pay too much attention to that. It's only just become profitable. So this is an indicator that's probably kind of slightly based on old data. The profitability will keep rolling in with each quarter and that number is going to improve significantly. And I like those turning points just before the world realizes it's profitable. It's nice to kind of enter growth stocks, at least in my opinion. And the stock hasn't done very well. And we love that. We love stocks that haven't done very well. And you probably know what they, they do. They're kind of a new bank. They're a digital bank. They also own their back end. So the whole full data stack that runs the bank, SoFi actually owns and develops through uh, Galileo. And they also provide that to other banks, which is kind of interesting and obviously another income stream for them. And you don't see many banks with a gross profit margin of 81%. That's pretty staggering stuff. Revenue is at 2 billion. That's Typically for me, the sweet spot where I get interested in growth stocks because I know now that they've proven their business model to a large extent. And net income has actually just turned positive. So that's positive. And profits have been growing at 43% a year, which is pretty staggering stuff. Now, anything we need to know from this? I think we can probably skip past that one. They've been very, very consistent with earnings. How do they do that? management sandbags. So management makes pretty miserable assumptions on the state of the economy and where it's going. And then as the economy typically does better because Papa Biden and Powell continuously provide money to anybody who might want some, the economy does better. And therefore, overall, the market does better. You've got less delinquencies on loans and, and, and so on. So they continue to beat. I'd expect them to continue to do that. Now, is it cheap? No. <laughs> it's trading at 100 plus X forward PE, but I don't care about that number. That number is assuming you're looking at a profitable business that's been around for a long time, and then it's kind of more, more relevant. But if you wait like nine years and held onto the stock and you bought at current levels, and you assume that growth would fizzle out into the like low teens and single digits, you would then own the stock at four or five X. And that means you basically get a 20 times return on the, on the investment, which is pretty cool. So overall, this looks pretty good. So what does that mean in terms of why now, why 2024? Because we're going to get rate cuts and you see all the headlines, there'll be no rate cuts, no, never. 
Jerome Powell said there will be rate cuts this year. He's the man who makes the decision. And the man who sits on his head is the president, Biden, who also said there will be rate cuts in July, I think, is what he said. Like he's the charge around the <clears throat> independent federal bank and all of that. There will be rate cuts. What happens when interest rates go down? Lower rates mean what? Higher growth stock prices. And how does that work? It works through two ways. One is the, the valuation model that Wall Street users takes into account higher interest rates. Higher interest rates are really bad for the value of future profits. It sort of inflates them away, if you will. And secondly, the alternative investment, the alternative risk-free investment, which would be bonds with higher interest rates, the bonds get the interest rate the bonds pay go higher and therefore you could have a risk-free alternative investment that now pays you more compared to the gaga crazy world of growth startups. So both of those things impact impact uh, the stock price and therefore it's more than likely that SoFi is going to significantly benefit from, from lower interest rates. And if you don't believe me, open a stock chart. Just go into... Go into trading view or some sort of hang on. Okay, that doesn't want to load. Let's try that again over here. There we go. So we type in SoFi and get rid of all the squiggly indicators and so on. And you know, you see a stock that's been been pretty volatile. Right. We just look at all time here. And then you add to it U.S. interest rates, and you can see that when the market started to expect rates to go up, which was around here, that is when SoFi started to tank, and it tanked pretty hard. And it hasn't really recovered from that because rates stayed up high, rates being the orange thing and the red and green is SoFi. So that continues to be the case, and that continues to be the thing that's pinning so far down. So when rates start to come down again, I would expect the stock price to go up. And that's the case for all growth startups in, yeah, just, just all of them really. So that's stock numero uno. If you want to see my trade on a very simple setup, I bought a January call option that expires in two years, like in 645 days as I'm recording this. And that $7 call option cost me $3,200. It's already making me no money. <laughs> it's literally at break even right now. So it's a zero risk trade at this point. But say SoFi goes up to maybe $10, then I might make something like $2,000 profit on that, which is about 80%. Now, what if in those two years, and I don't have to hold on to it for two years, obviously, what if we go to say $15, well, now it's made me a profit of somewhere between five and six and a half thousand dollars, which is pretty good on three thousand dollars initial investment. Now, is there some risk with this? Yeah, you could in theory lose the three thousand two hundred dollars. You can minimize that by having stop losses and things like that and managing this a little bit more, more, more smartly. And I would highly recommend you do that. But this is kind of what I look at at the moment. I see there are some opportunities that I think are outsized with, with limited downside. So that, that would be item numero uno. Now, number two, PayPal, similar. It's a fintech stock. It's an older one, but it's still a fintech stock. Still got hammered by interest rates to an extent, also, also by, by incompetent management, which they've gotten rid of. Cash flow is so-so. It's growing so-so. Stock price hasn't done very much. We like that. It's very profitable and it's pretty cheap. So for me, it's a similar idea here. Look for something that has real potential upside and take advantage of that. And the reason people don't like PayPal is their margins have just been staying flat or coming down and they need to do something about that. But revenue is pretty good. Profitability is pretty decent. Return on invested capital at 12% is stellar. Profits could grow a little bit more, absolutely. So it's kind of like in a 
spot where people don't like it. But the free cash flow, they said was going to be 5 billion this year, and they're going to use that for buybacks. Now, they've already authorized buybacks equivalent to 20% of the stocks out there. So this company is worth 70 billion right now. If you get 5 billion a year, 5 over 72, you can buy back like 6 or 7% of all the stocks out there every year. And that in itself generates return for you and me as shareholders, right? Because less shares out there, our shares automatically become 6 or 7% more valuable unless they do something really stupid and the company becomes complete trash. But it's fairly hard to... I think it's fairly hard to imagine they're going to do much worse than they're doing right now. And new management has done a little bit last earnings, a bit of an improvement to what we've seen pre in previous earnings, but it's a little too early to tell. That's why I haven't bought any PayPal yet, because I think the risk is still out there. Having said that, it is a very cheap stock by forward PE momentum, 12 or 13 times is very, very cheap considering, I mean, try looking around. Every, everything you're going to buy is pretty much 30, 40, 50 right now in this kind of market environment. So how do we how do we play this then as a trade? And of course, it's not financial advice. This is just one of Winston's ideas. We are looking at PayPal here and it's the same idea. And I'm not usually a huge fan of these. So I don't buy these call options that are two years long and everything out there and hope for the best because that's a daft idea. I only do it when there is something that I think is absolutely undervalued and has a significant chance of moving up a lot, in which case I get a massively outsized return. So this trade here, I spend $16,000 on it. And at the moment, I'm up $1,000. So what I can do now is set a stop loss at zero. And that way I have zero risk on this trade. I can never, ever lose any money on it. But what if, what if PayPal goes up a little bit? Say it goes up to $80, $85, say. Then I might make maybe ten, fifteen thousand $15,000 profit on this, which would be more than double or about double what I put in. If it goes to say $120, which if you look on the left side here, would take us back to March 2020 levels only. You know, we were at 300 at one point. So let's just say it goes to 120. Then we're looking at thirty-five dollars to $45,000 gains on a 16K investment, which is pretty sweet. So for me, I like occasionally these potentially outsized return trades. Most of the time, I just set up trades where I make a little bit, just make small increments on small trades all the time. But when I see an opportunity like this, I can just go, okay, there's now zero risk on this trade. And this is the second one I've done so far this year. So we've already made money on PayPal. Uh, and, and just just keep, let, 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 let it run. Let it run and see what happens. And, and hopefully earnings will be good. And if not, we can wait till the next earnings, as long as we are not losing any money on it, right? Which is a, a good way to look at it. So that would be idea number two. Not quite sure what that's all about. But oh, yeah, oh, yeah, this is what this is all about. Okay. Uh, this is because item number three is what? It's Kathy's. Ark, you know, the thing with all the animals on it, all the nutters on it. And I've never owned Ark Innovation ETF because during the post COVID area where everyone was buying this, I thought this is a bunch of nutty, high risk crap that I don't understand. It talks about the genomic revolution and, and all sorts of stuff that I don't even know what the heck that means. So I was like, no, 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 not for me. Thank you very much. You knock yourselves out. But look at I'll pop a stock chart up here for you. Arc K. Here we go. And this is all time. Is it all time? This is all time. So at one point it was trading at 140. That was probably overdone. I don't think we're going to go back there anytime soon. But we're right now trading at 2018 valuations levels, which kind of makes me feel 2018, the world was a pretty depressed, miserable place. I mean, bankers were hurling themselves out of windows on a daily basis. Not literally, but they probably should have done. And we then went, 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 went a little bit nuts, nuts, didn't we? But let's just say we go to, you know, sort of May 2020 levels or something like that. Maybe we go back to $64. What would actually happen with that? Well, let me show you in just a moment. But what do they actually own. You got that in here? Yeah. Consumer discretionary, financials, industrials, 
real estate restricted. It sounds sounds scary. Obviously, it's a lot of it's a lot of innovation stuff. Um, they own a lot of Spotify, KE Holdings, Pinterest, Unity, PagerDuty, Huya, a lot of stuff that I wouldn't necessarily own myself, but they've all been pummeled by high interest rates. So if you go back in this chart here and pop US interest rates back in there, what do you see? The, the orange, let me get an orange color here. The orange thing is interest rates. So when the interest rates went down, ARC rallied. When interest rates went up, ARC collapsed. Would you expect the same thing to happen again? Yes. I think when interest rates go down, ARC's going to go up. That's just that's a cyclical thing. This is what growth stocks, innovative stocks do. And therefore, we are doing, me and Winston, again, a very simple trade, two years out, on we've got like two thousand dollars on this at the moment it's a very simple call option again i don't don't recommend you do this do this in a paper trading account if you want to learn come and join me on tuesday and i'll actually explain how we make regular small bits of income and say we go back to sixty dollars or so well then we'll make about nineteen hundred dollars profit potentially which would double our income if we went a little higher say we went back into the 80s now we're making three to five thousand dollars profit on this, which is pretty sweet, given we only put two thousand dollars into this. And I might, I might nibble and, and, and continue to expand the trade. I also like to do that. Don't put everything on on black and on the on, on the outset. Sort of see if it goes in the right way, and then we add a little bit to it incrementally. So I think innovation is going to come back. I like to be a little bit of a contrarian, uh, go against the grain. Always look at where's the crowd running. Just a good, a good advice for life. Look at where the crowd's going. Go the opposite way. It's going to be more pleasant. It's going to be more interesting. There's going to be more money in it. And, and you'll enjoy yourself. And one thing I do, for example, is well, I don't have a job, right? So I go to all the lovely places during the week because everybody else is at work. And then on the weekend, I pretty much stay at home because everyone else is out in, 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 you know, in droves. And same with holidays. I never travel at Christmas or Easter or any of those places because I don't have to. So if you can go against the grain with investment and life decisions and everything else, you generally have a much more pleasant time, a much more rewarding time. If you enjoyed this video, you know what to do. Share it with a golden retriever. And I thank you for watching. I thank you for tuning in. Winston and Felix here. And Winston just said to me, Felix, it's almost April. What stocks are we buying in April? And I thought, Winston, that's a genius idea. 